Okay. Welcome, everyone, to today's webinar. Today, we'll be discussing UniCloud, specifically controllers with embedded cloud offering. If there are any questions during today's webinar, please enter them into the questions box real time. I will be addressing them at the end of the presentation. Additionally, uh, there's a lot of learning materials available for the UniCloud. If you like those materials, please feel free to reach out to our support team, support at unitronics.com after the presentation, and we'd be happy to get you those materials. So to begin, I'm going to do a quick UniCloud overview and define some terminology. So to begin, UniCloud is Unitronics no-code IIoT solution for OEMs and machine builders. The UniCloud can collect data from devices in the field and show that data in usable format on what we call dashboards. There's some additional functionality with the UniCloud, including remote access to devices in the field, some scheduled events, and more. So first, dashboards is how one shows the data collected from devices in the field. And you can see some sample dashboards here. And the user builds these dashboards to accomplish the look and feel that they would like to offer to their customers, machine builders, and channels. Dashboards are built with predefined widgets, and these include map widgets, table widgets, graph widgets, meters, and more. Okay, some additional terminology. An asset type is program specific. You can almost think of an asset type as a template. One program can be downloaded to many different machines. Assets are the actual individual machines that are in the field. A PLC, uh, for example, a Unitronics PLC, is an example of an asset. PLCs are validated on the cloud by serial number. And once they're validated, data can be collected and remote access can be accomplished. Unitronics offers a, uh, a router solution, a UCR router, that can be connected to the internet via a wired connection, Wi-Fi, or a cellular connection. Organizations are groups on the cloud. Okay, so uh, your company, for example, can have an organization, and you can have many users uh, and many devices tied to that organization. You can then add in uh, some sub-organizations for your machine builders, your channels, or your end customers. And you can give them different rights on the dashboard, like view only, admin level access, and more. Okay, so a few highlights to the UniCloud. Uh, it does raise efficiency in the form of data collection and analytics. Fast commissioning because of the no code. It's a very simplified uh, connection and very simplified setup. Full control in the form of remote access to the devices. And you can go live in under 30 minutes with the UniCloud. Okay, so here's a little bit of a breakdown about that 30 minutes. It takes about two minutes to configure the machine and the program. An additional five minutes to connect to the UniCloud. 20 minutes to build a basic dashboard, and about two minutes to manage cust customers, distributors, and your other channels. And I do want to stress uh, that there is no code or cloud expertise required uh, with this setup. Once you're done, you can analyze KPIs, increase performance, increase revenue, and you can monitor the machines in the field and even operate the machines in the field that are connected to the UniCloud. Okay, business benefits. 
you as a machine builder uh, can now offer IIoT capabilities to end customers and end users. Monitoring is very big in the industry currently. Being able to monitor devices remotely in a secure fashion uh, is very important. Um, and UniCloud offers that in a very simplified way. Business intelligence is improved. You can now offer additional services that might increase sales, like preventative maintenance, data analytics, and more. And you can extend your reach to your end customers and add them to your uh, ecosystem, if you will, on the cloud. You can add them to your organization, give them rights, and keep in contact through the UniCloud. Okay, some of UniCloud's main features, data collection and data presentation, not only visualization, but also uh, analytics, asset and organization management, asset of course being the devices in the field, and organization management, uh, the users of the dashboard, and secure remote access in the form of VPN, VNC, and web server to the assets in the field. Okay, dashboards are completely customizable. There is no code required. You're using predefined widgets to build a user interface. Multiple languages are supported, and the connection and data are completely secure. Okay, let's talk about the UniCloud architecture for a moment. To the left, you can see devices that can connect to the UniCloud. First, the UniStream, which is cloud ready. It just needs a internet connection. This can come uh, in the form of a existing network, right? Or Unitronics UCR routers is a option and that can be combined with a SIM card to get a cellular connection. Now the Vision, Samba, and Jazz controllers all require the UCR router as a gateway to the UniCloud. It's worth noting that third-party devices that support Modbus can also be integrated to the UniCloud using the Unitronics UCR router as a UniCloud gateway. So again, third-party devices that support Modbus can connect to the UniCloud. At the bottom, you can see the machine builder. And the machine builder is going to design the dashboards, manage the organizations, manage the assets that connect to the cloud. And here they can monitor performance, service, maintenance, and more. And you can see to the top right, dashboard users are customers who have been given access to a cloud organization. And they can have different levels of access, including view only, admin level access, and more. Okay, so now that we have discussed some terminology, let's discuss a industry first. The first and only PLC with built-in cloud service at the time of purchase. There's no monthly fee, and there's no additional purchase of hardware or software. You buy the unit, and you immediately have cloud service. And this is called the Unistream C series. All Unistream PLCs are available in the C series, and it does need to be selected prior to purchase. And you can see some examples of part numbers below. Within the part number, you're going to want to locate the B and replace it with a C. You can see with the built-in, that's going to be in the middle of the part number, with the PLC only also in the middle, In the modular, it will be at the end of the part number. So again, take the basic part number or the base part number and replace the B with a C. Next, the plan details. 
The PLC will come with five years of cloud access, and that timer begins when the unit is first connected to a cloud account. No additional hardware is required. You set everything up in UniLogic, and the UCR router is optional. Okay, so I did want to touch on the UCR router for a moment. The UCR router can connect to the internet via a wired connection, Wi-Fi connection, or a cellular connection when combined with a SIM card. There are two versions of the UCR router, the B5 and the B8. Some of the key differences, uh, the B5 will have one LAN port, the B5 will have three. The B5 has one SIM slot, the B8 has two dual SIM slots. The B5 has only a few I.O. points, and the B8 will have expanded I.O. on board the router, and more. Uh, if you have any questions on that, you can reach out to us, no problem. You'll see the routers relevant for North America are the Verizon and AT&T model routers. It is important to select the router based on the cellular service provider that you plan to use. Verizon router will be used with Verizon SIM, and AT&T router with AT&T SIM. Okay, so those devices that do not have embedded cloud, right, that, that do not, uh, those devices will require a subscription plan based on the monthly tag usage. Right now, we have a free trial for any subscription plan. So you can use any Unitronics PLC and take UniCloud for a test drive. There's also free secure remote access to the end of 2022. Okay, so that concludes the slide presentation. Next, let's take a look at a UniCloud dashboard. So here is an example of a finished dashboard. And I'll highlight some of the key functions that uh, one could implement on a dashboard. So to the left will be a map of all of the assets connected. And I can take a look at their location and their current status. I can zoom out and take a look at all the assets that are connected. At the top here, I have some alarming functionality. All 11 of the devices that are connected are OK. No major or minor alarms. The table here is for upcoming maintenance. The UniCloud is taking a look at the current uh, working hours of each pump, and it's adding it to the table if it reaches 7,000 working hours. And we can see currently uh, one in Sydney, Australia has reached that amount, and it needs some, some maintenance. The two graphs to the right are showing power consumption. Power consumption per day over the last week. And power consumption per month. If I scroll down, there's a table of all assets. And some water flow information. Now I can navigate away from this main display, or this main dashboard, and I can take a look at an asset that might need some maintenance. Okay, and it will navigate to a page that will show me the maintenance information, including the working hours. I can navigate back. And I can also take a look at the details of a asset. For example, this pump in Los Angeles, California. I can click it. And there's a dashboard, a secondary dashboard, that's designed here for the details of a specific pump. And again, we selected the one in Los Angeles, so that's the one being shown. It'll show me the status, the daily flow, pump speeds. If I scroll down, some power consumption, power consumption information, water flow information. 
And finally, uh, there will be a VNC connection to this Unistream. And this is the HMI, uh, and I can interact with it here on the dashboard. Scrolling down further, there will be the web server. And I can again interact with the web server of the PLC directly from the dashboard. It's very nice to have both the VNC and the web server functionality. Uh, in this case, they're, they're essentially duplicating the interface. Uh, but the web server could be used as a secondary set of screens, maybe as an admin set of screens, or it could show different information. Okay. Uh, last thing I do want to point out, these graphs or these tables uh, can be exported to a CSV format. Or you can take a screenshot of the current graph. So this data is available for download if required. Okay, that was just a little overview to show what is possible. Next, let's take a look at UniLogic and how to configure a controller to connect to the UniCloud. So today I'm working with a USC C10 dash TR22. And that is the embedded cloud PLC only model. The first steps I'm going to take is to put this controller on my network. Again, the controller does need a internet connection. So I'll go to PLC communications, physical, panel ethernet. And I assigned an IP address on my local network. Additionally, I defined a DNS server of 8888. This is Google's free DNS. The DNS is important for connecting to the cloud. It essentially takes the words of a website and translates them to the current website's IP address. Uh, so in order to connect, you will need a DNS server. And again, you can use Google's free DNS server, 8888 or one that your IT assigns. Next, navigate to UniCloud in the Solution Explorer. Enable UniCloud. You're gonna start by logging in. I'll go ahead and provide my cloud credentials. And we'll sign in. And it will ask me what organization I would like to assign this device to. We'll say Unitronics. Next, I need to create the asset type for this project. I'll go ahead and create the type. And I'll call this Dan's Pump. And I will create the asset type. Next, in the Solution Explorer, expand asset type and navigate to tags. Here, add the tags that you would like to communicate to the cloud. I'll add a tag. Maybe my struct for pump one. I'll add my struct for pump two. Struct for pump three. And you can continue to add tags here, depending on what you would like to communicate to the UniCloud. Okay, I've added the three structs. These will be communicated to the cloud. Next, navigate to alarms. And you can enable alarms for UniCloud. Now you can select which alarms you would like to communicate to the UniCloud. For this example, I will not include the alarms. Finally, remote access. If you'd like to allow remote access from UniCloud, check this box. One important step is to enable VNC. 
I can go to password management, VNC server working mode, and enable with or without a password. Okay, so the tags are defined, remote access is defined. I can navigate back to my asset type. And now that we have tags being communicated to the UniCloud, we can change the subscription interval and it will tell us how many tags we'll be communicating on a monthly basis. So let's say I communicated this every 10 minutes. Assuming that the controller was running 24 seven, uh, about 160,000 tags would be communicated per month based on every 10 minutes. And we can change this to a much lower value, right? We can change it to 10 seconds. And there's a larger number of tags that are communicated and it might change our plan requirements. For now, I could set it to a one minute interval. Now that we've finished defining the asset type, sync to the UniCloud. Now I'm gonna go ahead and download this project to the controller. Once downloaded, we're gonna use the UniApps interface to finalize the cloud connection. We'll go ahead and create the asset from UniApps and load the certificate. And it's a very quick process. Okay, the download is complete. Okay, I established the VNC connection so I can show you my screen. And I navigated to UniApps. To add this asset to the UniCloud, navigate to Network, UniCloud, Activate UniCloud, create asset in UniCloud. And again, this is the first step to create the asset. And I'm gonna log into my cloud account. It will ask me to name the asset. Call it P1 Dan. And the asset was successfully created. The next step is to activate UniCloud and to load the certificate from UniCloud. The certificate loaded successfully. It is now a UniCloud asset. Finally, under assets, we're going to start sending data. And the state change was successful. The communication status now reads connected. Next, let's take a look at the UniCloud account. Okay, I navigate to unitronics.io and log in. I'll select Unitronics as my organization. And my default dashboard shows up. Uh, what we'll talk about now are the additional options that we have under the navigation pane. I'll navigate to device management. Here are the assets that are connected to my cloud account. And we can see the new device, P1Dan, is connected. 
I can click on the device and edit some of its cloud properties, including its location, its serial number, make some comments, and more. And I can take a look at what tags are being communicated to the UniCloud. And I can see it's all of the pump information that we defined in the program. The subscription tag will have how often the tags are communicated. Right now, this is being performed every one minute, and I can edit it from this location, say to every 30 seconds. The device changed its time interval, and so did the subscription plan. Event management is how one would uh, manage events. And organization is how one would add users as well as sub-organizations to their main organization. And we do have webinars for this, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out directly to me and I can share some materials. Finally, dashboard editor is where you will build your dashboard. I can create a new dashboard and I can call it today's webinar. And these are the properties of the dashboard. What organizations is the dashboard relevant for? What asset types? Uh, maybe we'll call this uh, Dan's pump, which is the asset type that we created from UniLogic. The date range that's relevant and the geography, right? And if you had different customers, again, you could assign um, different assets to different organizations and only show the relevant organization on this dashboard. Same thing for geography, right? You could only show uh, the North American pumps if, if you'd like to do that. So I'll create this dashboard. And the widgets to create the dashboard are at the top. Okay, and you can see we have many widgets available, right? I'll just take a few here. For example, the map. Uh, which asset types should be on this map? The ones that are Dan's pump. We can see that's in Quincy. I'll finish the map here. Fantastic. And then maybe we could show a value. Dan's pump is the asset type. The relevant tag data, maybe uh, the current for pump one. Now here we can do some aggregated data. Uh, we can do some summing, averaging, and so on. We can do the last value, which is the last reported value to the UniCloud. Or we can do some aggregated by last value. So I'll choose the last value. I'll add my pump one current to the data and metrics. The current is currently zero. I have my aesthetic properties here. finish and there's the value of my current and again there are some uh, some more complicated widgets right including conditional widgets here's my VNC option and my web server table and column and pie chart gauges a line and the option to update a asset tag, right? So you can actually push an update from the UniCloud to that tag. Okay, once we're completed building our dashboard, we can publish. 
under organizations, I can change my default dashboard to today's webinar. And now if I navigate to my dashboard, I'll see the dashboard that we just created. Okay, at this point, I'd like to field any questions uh, that anybody has about the UniCloud or the controller with the embedded cloud offering. So feel free to ask your questions uh, now. Everyone give me just a moment. I'm just reviewing the questions here. I will get to all of them. Okay, so first question. Um, I wanted to cover uh, the subscriptions. There was a question about subscriptions, right? So here is the uh, asset that we just added during today's webinar, right? And you can see that it's active, right? Uh, that's because uh, this was a embedded cloud Unistream, right? It was a C series Unistream. So uh, right out of the box, you connected it and the subscription is active. Uh, you can see this asset here, Thomas's asset, uh, is now expired, right? So it went through its free three month trial. And after the three month trial, it expired this would now require a subscription uh, because it is not a cloud uh, embedded controller, right? It is just a standard part number. It will require a monthly subscription. Uh, if you add a new unit out of the box that does not have the embedded cloud, right, is not the C series, you will see a, a trial option under the subscription, right? Until your three months runs out, uh, then it will read expired. And you'll see this is in communication error right now because it's expired. Okay, so one thing I, uh, there's a small mistake in the presentation. I'm just gonna pull up that slide real quick. Just a moment for me. Okay, I'm gonna go through these real quick. Escape there. Okay, so this slide here, right? Uh, when I was talking about the plan information for the C series, um, I believe I said 2,000 tags a month, which is incorrect. It was 200,000 tags a month, right? So uh, much more tags. And again, we saw on the cloud how you can uh, see your current plan. Okay, deleting an asset. Um, yeah, I could definitely cover that, right? So let's delete this asset that has been expired, Thomas's asset, right? So right now it's in my active assets. What we have to do is select it. Okay, we need to edit. And we need to disconnect from this asset here, right? So I'll disconnect, continue. Okay, the asset is no longer connected, right? It is uh, disconnected, right? Now what I'd like to do is uh, archive the asset. So again, I'll click on the asset again. 
and I'll archive it. It's now archived. And I'll go to the PLC management. I see the device here. And I will permanently disconnect it from my organization's inventory. Again, with this disconnect option here. And I'll confirm. And the asset is now fully disconnected, right? So it's essentially a three-step process to make sure that you're uh, you know, not making a mistake. There are a few checks there. But you need to remove it from your asset management and then your PLC management. Um, there is a help topic on that, right? If I go to the drop-down menu here and open up the help, um, I believe it's under device management. And then disconnecting an asset, removing it from organization, right? So that the full process that I just outlined uh, is available here under this help topic, right? And the help is great too, right? There's a lot of videos embedded in the help, um, a lot of uh, discussion about how to build out your dashboard. Um, there's a video on a lot of the widgets available and some examples. So I highly recommend the help file. It's pretty uh, pretty inclusive there. Okay, will this webinar be available? Uh, it will. Yes, it will be available for sure. Um, you can reach out to our support team, support at unitronics.com, and as soon as the recording is ready, I will uh, for sure share it. Okay, so there's some uh, questions about uh, subscriptions. Again, if you have a C-series PLC, right, it's going to be automatically active at the time of connection, right? If you don't have a C-Series PLC, it will require a subscription, right? Uh, what I'm going to do is open up the help again. And I'll navigate to subscriptions, right? And this help topic talks you through the subscription. So first, it will go over the plans that are available, right, from startup, which is the 200,000 tags per month all the way to advanced. More. And then it will go over um, uh, which is much more. The part numbers here uh, per subscription uh, uh, plan details, right? How many tags per month? And these are the relevant part numbers here. Okay, I do want to show some additional uh, learning information quick, right? So if I go to unitronics.cloud, the website, uh, this is the marketing uh, website for the cloud, right? And it does have a lot of information here, including uh, information about getting started under UniCloud. And there are videos and tutorials here for building dashboards, for connecting Unistream controllers, Vision controllers, Sambas, and even third-party devices via Modbus. So uh, these videos are great. They're very quick, very informative. Uh, they'll walk you through the steps you need to take uh, to get those items complete. Uh, there's also a pricing page here that will discuss uh, the different subscription options uh, in detail. Okay, is it possible to update a tag dynamically? Um, I believe I understand the question, right? So what I'm going to do is go to my ladder. I'm going to navigate to the bottom, and there's going to be a cloud tools option here, right? And I can trigger a sync to the cloud, right? So if I have, say, a, uh, a interval time 
of two hours, but I want to also be able to push data or sync it to the cloud. Um, I can do that off of this trigger here, right? And that way, it's almost a uh, event trigger. And this is just the status. Okay, so there is the trigger. Uh, it's worth noting that um, this is going to communicate all the tags, right? It's not going to single out a tag. So this is just an event trigger to sync to the cloud. Another good question, uh, alarms, right? If I have alarms enabled, uh, these are automatically event-based, right? We don't want to miss an alarm. So uh, if I have alarm enabled and the alarm goes high, that alarm will immediately be pushed and synced to the cloud, right? So uh, again, these are not subject to the time delay there. Okay, I'm just reading to see if there are any other questions here. Bear with me for just a moment. Okay, so the example that I showed today uh, was for pumping systems, right? But uh, that was just an example. This uh, UniCloud uh, can be adapted to any machine that you build, right? Uh, manufacturing lines, brewing systems, uh, boilers, whatever your machine is performing, uh, you're the one that, again, designs the dashboard, makes the data available, gives everything its naming convention, right? So you're building out this dashboard um, for your customers based on your machine, right? So it's very customizable. Pumps was just the example used in today's webinar. Okay, perfect. Um, I don't think I missed any questions, but feel free to reach out to our support team at any time. Again, support at unitronics.com. Uh, if you have any interest uh, in the UniCloud, I highly recommend you take it for a test drive. It's free to sign up, unitronics.io, create an account. Uh, we do provide two um, demo uh, assets, right, with some demo data that you can play with when you sign in. So there's no need to actually connect the unit if you don't have one available. Uh, you can still build out your dashboards and kind of get a feel for the system. So thanks everyone uh, for your attention today. And I hope you have a great day.